So here's the news for today, November 8th. We have an article here from Bitcoin.com saying, India Central Banker doubles down on suppressing Bitcoin. And it's talking about it's talking about how they are not going to ban cryptocurrencies and Bitcoin. So there's two sides of the story here. Some are saying that virtual currencies should be banned because of the potential misuse for money laundering and fraud. And then uh, the head politician here states, the cryptocurrency ecosystem in India is very small. Bitcoin is accepted at only a few restaurants and some virtual currency exchanges allow users to make payments for books or movie tickets. It is mainly being used as an investment option. There remains no mystery why. So talking about Zeb Pay, India's largest cryptocurrency exchange, remarked, we will do our best to continue with their efforts to educate the government about cryptocurrencies. It can be used for India by turning the country into a fintech hub to increase financial inclusion, and there are several other benefits of it. So we're starting with the bad news first, obviously, today. As Bitcoin reaches new price highs, network congestion and fees spike. So this article uh, talks about how Bitcoin transactions are around $10, $5 to $10 per transaction right now. Because uh, the transactions are bottlenecking and there are currently 2,600 unconfirmed transactions due to um, the congestion of the Bitcoin network. And this is part of the reasons why all these forks are happening. Every fork you see is someone promising or a group of people promising to fix this problem. But when there's not a consensus and the whole community does not agree, there's a split. If the whole community agreed, then it would just be an update of the Bitcoin code, kind of like a soft fork. So the cheapest uh, fee right now that you can get is $4.50 on the Bitcoin network. And then it talks about how the Bitcoin Cash network fees are exponentially lower. And you can see this chart here. It shows Bitcoin transaction fees in orange and then Bitcoin uh, Cash transaction fees in green. So they're always under a dollar, actually always under about 50 cents. If you look at the chart. So they're still mixed mixed uh, opinions about the SegWit 2x fork and there's a lot of uh, uncertainty in what's going to happen. This article from Coindesk explains how SegWit 2x is 51% attack. So this is one side of the argument in one viewpoint. If there is a fear that has played on people's minds as the end day scenario for Bitcoin, it is this. Attackers who hold more than 50% of hash power could stop transactions from confirming and even reverse some transactions. They could undermine the whole project. And we know with uh, SegWit2x's replay protection issues, um, it can be damaging to Bitcoin. People can lose Bitcoin due to SegWit2x's uh, unsecure network. So saying here, by all indication, a co coordinated 51% attack will begin on or around November 16th. That's when a consortium of miners representing substantially more than 50% of the network's hash power and an allied group of blockchain startups will seek to increase the block size. This will require a hard fork, 
which while controversial is still a legitimate desire in itself, this is not an attack. And then it explains here where it goes wrong. So it talks about here how um, the it's beyond it's evolved beyond a simple fork. It's now being developed not simply as an effort to fork the chain, but to do so in such a way as to deliberately prevent the continued existence of the status quo chain or the main Bitcoin chain. So it's saying how the replay protection allows for people to lose funds on the Bitcoin blockchain if the transaction is being done on the, the 2x blockchain. And it's stating here how without replay protection in place, a minority chain becomes less likely to survive. So it's talking about how, here how Bitcoin 2x is not only trying to create a better solution, it's trying to destroy the current Bitcoin. So this Bloomberg article talks about how Bitcoin, well, they're assuming Bitcoin is surging on hopes that the um, upcoming fork may be avoided. And uh, they're talking about how um, there was definitely risk involved in that respect. It's great to have risk taken off the table, at least for now. It would be great to have been great for Bitcoin to prove its resilience once again and to strike this scenario off the fear list. Overall, though, the cancellation of the 2x fork highlights Bitcoin's resilience and reaffirms Bitcoin's status as the honey badger of money. So Segwit2x was supposed to double the block size to 2 megabytes, which is a, in practice increases the network speed and reduces transaction fees. It was the second step after the network adopted Segwit upgrade earlier this year. So from this viewpoint, they're saying that it has been uh, cancelled but I'm not sh so sure that that's set in stone. Two popular hard fork wallet firms reveal Segwit to X fork plans. So this article is for people that have a Satoshi Labs Trezor and Ledger wallet. They are releasing software for you to be able to split your coin and do it safely without risking your public or private keys and things like that. So if you do have one of those wallets, check out um, their plans. They are the only two, they are the only two hardware wallets right now that uh, have plans and have released plans and instructions on how to, to uh, get through the Segwit2x fork. Moving on to some good news here, guys. Bitcoin price doubles in trouble to Zimbabwe. So the Zimbabwe dollar is not worth very much. That's why someone's saying uh, this picture is this guy with a huge stack of cash that he paid for one Bitcoin. So it's talking about how their uh, financial system in Zimbabwe is collapsing and Bitcoin is trading for a uh, hundred percent premium so it's trading for double what it's worth in Zimbabwe at thirteen thousand dollars so it's saying here traders have been trying to move out of the monetary assets as even on the dollar there is a 62 percent premium it has meant that investors are trapped by currency shortages seeking a, an alternative to exit the country such as Bitcoin And they're having a, a banking collapse, and Bitcoin could be uh, a solution and could be a fix for this banking issue. And when the banks collapse, this coin, Bitcoin, they're stating, could be a replacement for their currency. So they're saying here that uh, Zimbabwe banks have stated that Visa debit cards would no longer be usable for international payments without prior arrangements and pre-funding with hard currency and you will be required to make prior arrangements with the bank. Um, wire 
Econet Wireless has also stopped foreign payments on its MasterCard linked EcoCash mobile money debit card. So I think Zimbabwe needs their own uh, Bitcoin exchange if they don't have one already. And I don't know exactly where people are paying, paying these prices. Uh, probably in person when someone buys uh, Bitcoin in person because they can buy it online if they had US dollar but since they don't have US dollars and their banks are not cooperating it's hard for them to trade in and out of Bitcoin probably with their Zimbabwe dollar but people are doing it and I'm sure it's going on on the streets uh, if they don't have uh, their own currency exchange or it's going on on localbitcoins.com. This article from Coindesk explains how people trust cryptocurrencies over gold. And uh, the Dean of Evaluation, Evaluation from Wall Street, um, I think, wait. Cryptocurrencies are becoming a preferred alternative to gold for those who don't tr trust in traditional currencies. According to this professor of finance at NYU's Stern School of Business, which we already know this, 75000 and rising, Bitcoin price looks ready to change challenge records. So this article spells out why it looks like Bitcoin could rise instead of drop because there were, were some things uh, a couple days ago that were hinting on the price dropping we saw it drop a bit and now we're seeing some signals that it could go back up and it's saying here the above chart shows a symmetrical triangle breakout which occurs when prices form lower highs and higher lows. It is a bullish continuation pattern. An upside break as seen on the chart above signals the revival or continuation of the rally. So this symmetrical triangle right here from the high and the low tells people that it is going to move up and it's saying the doors are open for a rally to fresh record highs above 7,600 however the daily chart shows doji reversal and there is merit on being cautious as long as the price trades below the doji high of 7,630 so basically there is a chance of it dropping so long as it's below that 7,300 mark, right? Um, sorry, 7,630. So this line right here, as long as it's under this line, there is still a chance of it going down. But if it goes above this line, that means we're we're uh, primed for a breakout of it going higher. So maybe set in some stop orders for it, if it goes above this line to buy if it goes down below somewhere around here to sell litecoin price looks northwards amid korean volume spike so there's a spike in korean volume and it is jumping the price of litecoin as we can see it's uh it's up in the $60 range and it was sitting at $50 for a few weeks there coin market cap data indicates the rally has been fueled by exchanges offering trading in litecoin slash south korean won pairs volume on bitthumb one of the biggest exchanges in south korea have gone up by 26.89% in the last 24 hours. So some big whales are buying up Litecoin. 
And we already know that Litecoin is one of the most undervalued currencies out there. So we should all have a decent amount of Litecoin. Whatever we can afford, that is. Ethereum wallet parity hit by second critical vulnerability. So if you haven't heard about this Ether wallet problem, there's 150 plus million dollars locked in some Ether parity wallet, but it probably doesn't affect you as you probably don't have a parity Ethereum wallet. I'm pretty sure this is a external type of an external wallet or a, a wallet that you specifically have to download. So if you don't know the word parity, you probably don't have a parity wallet. And it's due to multi-signature funds. So if you don't have a multi-signature parity wallet, then you're good. But what it does mean for most people is that the price of Ether is dropping and people have less trust in the Ethereum blockchain because it has flaws. And this is uh, a huge bug and huge flaw and uh, it was done by somebody that had locked it in there by accident. So I don't think it was done as someone trying to steal money, although it could have been because there has been hacks on Ethereum before. But they are talking about maybe potentially forking Ethereum to fix this problem. So keep your eye open for that as well. Uh, because if you look at what happened with the past Ethereum fork where we got Ethereum Classic, uh, it really was wise for you to move over to the new Ethereum and get out of the old one. As we see, the new Ethereum, the fork Ethereum is worth $300 and Ether Classic is worth $15. We have here Silk Road Secret Service agent was sentenced for laundering money while prosecuting Ross Albridge. A Secret Service agent key in prosecuting Albridge during the infamous Silk Road case was himself sentenced to prison uh, on November 7th for money laundering crimes while investigating Mr. Albridge. So the authorities are saying that Bitcoin could be used for money laundering, but then they're laundering money with it. It doesn't look good. And another key point is, if it's such a problem and people are getting away with money laundering, why was this guy caught? Obviously, money laundering is uh, traceable with Bitcoin because that's why this guy's in jail. So they should be happy that people are trying to money launder with Bitcoin because it means they can catch them and find and trace their transactions. An interesting uh, paragraph on this article, though. Well, he, he zapped at least 1,600 Bitcoins to himself. He transferred them out of the Bitcoin BTCE exchange that they were kept in by Albrecht and into various other wallets. And we had some people that were connected to Ross Albrecht that were blackmailed and certain agents uh, forced them to teach them how to use Bitcoin for, um, for getting off their charges and things like that. So that's how he knew how to transfer this Bitcoin. He, he forced people to show him how to do it. So it goes to show also that a lot of these authority figures that are attacking it, they're doing it because they want it. They are greedy and they are jealous and they want their piece of the pie. Says here, particularly troubling is the fact that Mr. Bridges did not engage in further efforts to conceal and need to steal after he had entered the plea agreement. It's an interesting contrast for most Bitcoiners 
who are aware of Ross Albridge's case and incarceration. Mr. Albridge is serving a life sentence without the possibility of parole. Compared with the corrupt Secret Service agents, relatively paltry eight, and while debate might be had about Mr. Albridge's ultimate involvement in Silk Road, no charges were ever brought having to do with stealing funds or defrauding anyone. Crucially, and unlike Agent Bridges, Ross Albridge never pled guilty, maintaining his innocence. So, we have Ross Albridge here with a hugely uh, more severe sentencing than this agent. But Ross Albridge, all he did was create basically an eBay. He solved a problem in the world, and he got attacked for it because he was in the beginning stages of Bitcoin when people were afraid of it and the government was afraid of it and wanted to uh, prove a point and create an example so other people deterred from engaging in this activity. But anybody that has sold drugs on the dark web they are probably millionaires today because whatever cash they made, which already is a lot because they could connect to anybody in the world, would have went up thousands of times since they made it. So a lot of these guys that were selling on there, they should have gotten out a long time ago and shouldn't need to still be doing it. So he was previously convicted in late 2015 and then rearrested in 2016. He's saying here, a tearful Secret Service agent begs for a better prison conditions. I say we don't give it to him because when they incarcerated all these people that were running these websites, they put them in the worst conditions. Some of them even commit suicide because they were looking at multiple life sentences in horrible jail conditions. And this guy is now asking for mercy. So he's moaning carefully about his present terms of incarceration. I'm pretty much alone 99% of the time. The Secret Service agent says, They talked about one hour per day. It's more like one hour per three days. The six years I face in this, in the case psychologically breaks you. You're just alone all the time. And that, my friends, is what I call karma, because now he is seeing exactly what he's doing to other people. He's seeing for himself the horrible conditions in the jail and how they lie to you, and they don't treat you like a person at all. They treat you like an animal in there. I've been to jail a couple times, and I'm never going back. We have here... Blockpool states that the collaboration employs, basically we have Borg, who's embracing cryptocurrency with their upcoming album launch. So they are accepting cryptocurrencies uh, for payment for this album. And there's lots of interesting uh, information in this article. So... The ninth studio album, Utopia, will be made available for purchase using Bitcoin, Litecoin, Dash, or AudioCoin. Purchasers of the album will also receive 100 free AudioCoins, a little-known altcoin valued at less than 4004 US dollars. 0 .004 US dollars. So basically, it's worth less than a cent. It's worth half a cent. Get into it, guys. Get into this cryptocurrency, and we'll we'll read a little bit more, and you'll you'll agree with me once we're done. York's record label has teamed up with UK-based blockchain startup Blockpool. One little Indian records will team up with B2B blockchain solutions company Blockchain Blockpool to accept and distribute cryptocurrency as part of the release of Bjork's new album, Utopia. Fans will be able to purchase York's ninth studio album using one of four cryptocurrencies, Bitcoin, Litecoin, Dash, or AudioCoin. Purchasers of the album will also receive bonus AudioCoins. 
CEO of Blockpool, Kevin Bacon, has stated, this isn't about jumping on the bag wagon or trying to get rich quick. It's about doing things where you see block, you use blockchain and the crypto benefits in ways that people haven't thought of yet. It probably is partially due to uh, having more financial income for the album. Because like I said, with people that sold things for Bitcoin and altcoins years ago, that money they got, that revenue, has multiplied and exponentially grown. So you can, she can probably live the rest of her life by doing this one thing. Whereas artists have to keep releasing multiple albums because, well, the dollar's going down and things are getting more expensive. With this model, they should be able to do one successful album and then invest some of the funds or keep some of the funds in altcoins and keep living off it for a long time. Blockpool's website states that the collaboration employs its proprietary blockchain integration technology to build a smart reward system along their cryptocurrency checkpoint plugin. When a customer proceeds through the checkout, they will be invited to claim their audio coin using my blog pool portal. York's new album is available for purchase using cryptocurrencies. Audio coin or ADC was launched in 2015, seeking to incentivize both consumption and production of music through distributing audio coins to music consumers in exchange for streaming and downloading music. According to Gizmodo, individuals are being able to mine audio coins by streaming music using their Aurovine platform. Interesting. Since the start of November, the value of audio coins has approximately doubled, likely owing to the news of Bork's album launch. In conjunction with the altcoin's diminutive market capitalization, as of this writing, the price of a single audio coin is less than 0.04 of a cent, and the ADC has a total market cap of approximately 3.2 million US dollars, and it had a total market cap of less than 1 million until midway through this year. So let's check out audio coin. Let's go to our trusted market cap website. And here it is, ADC. Let's see what exchanges it's on. It's on Cryptopia, so most of us can get it through there. It has a volume of 40,000 in a 24 hour span. It also has went up since the article. And uh, let's see their website. So I guess Kevin Bacon's the CEO of AudioCoin, or sorry, of Block, what was it? Uh, Kevin Bacon is the CEO of Blockpool, which uh, distributes cryptocurrencies. So audio coin is here. Join their mailing list for bounties and claim free audio coins by listening to cool music at Aurovine. I think I'm going to uh, do that myself, but let's check out this quick video. What the music industry needs right now is innovation and a fresh start. It needs a Bob Dylan strapping on an electric guitar. It needs a Woodstock. It needs a punk rock style ground zero revolution. In developing AudioCoin, we looked at the problems facing the music industry, and by thinking laterally to include the financial ecosystem surrounding the business, we were able to come up with a model that is both truly revolutionary, and perhaps more importantly, ethical and fair. So yeah, guys, this is a true cryptocurrency or token. It has a real use, and it has a purpose that wouldn't be able to be done without uh, this token. So it's kind of like air miles, and I think uh, the whole air miles uh, structure is going to uh, turn into a more tokenized coin rather than air miles.
So when you make purchases, a lot of wallets and coins are offering rewards and cash back or rewards in coins. So this is a new model we're moving into. And uh, guys, get some audio coin. This is going to be big. One more thing I wanted to share with you is I'll put a link in the description for this documentary that uh, our good friend Charlie Shream is in. Uh, you can find him on Steemit. I've been following him for a while. He has great articles and writing, and he's on a few different uh, Bitcoin-related documentaries. He went to prison due to uh, starting and running a Bitcoin-related company, BitInstant, and he was one of the people that the government attacked in the beginning and tried to set an example of uh, for people opening uh, companies helping supply people with Bitcoin. The reason he went to jail had to do with the fact that he was selling to people or buying Bitcoin off people that he knew was involved in illegal activity in the dark web. But things have come a long way since then. That was the main industry that Bitcoin was used for back then when he ran his company. And now things are a bit different, but it did destroy his life and uh, shook up a lot of things, him going to jail. But he did start the Bitcoin Foundation. So that's Charlie Sheen in a nutshell. Guys, this has been a long ass video, so I'm going to get out of here and we'll catch you next time. Peace. We'll catch you tomorrow with our crypto market cap review.